anime. Bones anime? Uh... Here's a simple little recipe. Take one parts procedural drama, incorporate it with one parts anime slice of life series, and that gets you pretty close to Beautiful Bones, Sakurako's investigation. Of all the anime series genre hybrids out there, slice of life, procedural drama, may just be one of the least weird. Like, whoa there fella, you're seriously telling me that one of the most easygoing and low stakes genres from anime could naturally complement one of the most easygoing and low stakes genres from western television media? And yes, despite the often grisly subject matter of the CSIs and Law and Orders out there, I do mean easygoing and low stakes. No matter which episode you jump into, you pretty much know what you're going to get. CSI will almost always use Hollywood forensic science and intense flashback sequences to piece together the details of one or two crimes. House will almost always involve a bonkers medical mystery and a dickish main protagonist. SVU will almost always be a shit show. So on, so forth. There's nothing to unpack, so to speak. As long as you know the basic concepts, they're easy shows to comprehend. So it is with the Beautiful Bones 2, where a high schooler named Shotaro and an osteologist he met some time ago, named Sakurako, solve various mysteries most of the time, sometimes, but not always, concerning dead bodies, using her expertise of bones. <laughs> he said bones. Yes, I know. That's what she said. Shut up! So, how interesting does that sound to you? For my part, I was really interested. It's a big reason why I picked the series up in the first place, and I was quite happy with what I received. Plenty of mysteries do, in fact, get solved throughout the 12 episodes in compelling and thought-provoking ways using Sakurako's particular set of skills. So, in classic procedural form, I got what I expected. And anyone else who sees it, maybe you even, will likely get whatever they expect from it beforehand to, for better and for worse. So, end of story? Not quite. Okay, at this point, if you were watching this review in the hopes of finding out should you watch this but also want to go in totally blind, stop this review right now. Seriously, stop it now. You should know at this point if you want to watch it or not, and my recommendation is to trust your instincts in that regard. I, for example, dug what it was doing, but going more into why must inevitably involve minor spoilers, which I worry could be enough to dampen some of the surprise, so... One more time, stop now if you want to stay blind. But if you're open to a deeper discussion, well, let's proceed. Beautiful Bones has a serious leg up on the crop of procedurals in some aspects, most crucially in terms of characterization. I've found that to be one of procedurals' most lacking aspects, as in, they don't do well in making characters to give a full-hearted shit about. They certainly make attempts at it, sure, especially in the longer-running series, but it doesn't seem to work out so well. Most of the protagonists seem to be all surface demeanor by design, but lacking much of an inner world, and trying to inject said inner world comes off awkward instead of adding depth to their shows. Beautiful Bones, on the other hand? Nearly every person, the main duo, the supporting cast, even the quote-unquote victims, they're all fleshed out and worth caring about. The evident upside to the show's slice-of-life half. The best character, who probably most needed to be the best at that, is the bone expert herself, Sakurako. A recluse with little regard for socializing, little time in general to spare for humanity, apparently not even with her purported fiancé who never shows up through the whole series, and is seemingly more interested in the dead than the living at that. Like, outside of her housekeeper, all other inhabitants of her home are the skeletons of animals who passed along, all personally reconstructed by herself. And it's not some mere, I'm highly interested in skeletons type shit. We're talking about totally revering them with a level of fascination reserved more for art, or music, or anime. Most unsettling to her peers for understandable reasons, she does not even tamper her enthusiasm and excitement for dead people's remains, and will sometimes outright scheme to collect human bones for her personal collection, such as right in the first episode. 
So, yeah. Death is one of those things we, as humans, typically fear and often ignore, yet here is someone who seems to revel in it. She toes that line of the uncomfortable, existentially uncomfortable at that. What could it say about her as a person, especially as such a recluse uninterested in fellow humans? And more to the point, how morbid could the series get anyhow? Actually, not that morbid at all. In just a few episodes, the creepy edge of Sakurako's fascination with the bones almost totally goes away. It quickly becomes apparent that she actually has some rather zen attitudes towards life and death. Instead of a fixation on death or dying, her interest in bones is more reminiscent of a kind of people watching. To that effect, one of her most notable sayings is that bones are eloquent if you question them, i.e. they can tell a lot about somebody if you were observant enough to notice, and it's evident that she's passionate about finding out everything they could possibly tell her. So, yes, there are the expected times in Beautiful Bones where she assesses crime scenes with the naked eye and her forensic science lineage, but her skills and unique point of view are also put to use on more personable questions. Cases that illustrate the kinds of people her subjects truly were or are, and the lives they led. The result is that Beautiful Bones is often surprisingly touching. It will, for example, dedicate time in the middle of solving something twisted for Sakurako to cheer up a little girl, a witness at that, out of her embarrassment for a minor arm deformity. And my favorite quote-unquote case is about the grandmother of Kogami, one of Shotaro's classmates. Sakurako's insights here provide the kind of closure that is sheer perfection by how life-affirming it is. Sakurako's unique perspective lends Beautiful Bones plenty of soul and charm. In a weird way, her role is often as a bringer of peace. It might not have even been necessary for any other character to be good for the show to hold up, but hey, the rest of the cast is eminently likable anyhow. All of the semi-regulars, Shotaro's aforementioned classmate Kogami, the upbeat small town Kap Utsumi, the high school life sciences teacher Isozaki Sensei, all work nicely as foils to Sakurako, with their differing personalities, differing internal struggles, and varying thoughts on life and its aftermath. Really, it's Shotaro, designated normal male main protagonist that he is, who would be the easiest to fuck up since his role seems to come down way more often than it really should with cardboard cutout syndrome. Fortunately though, he lands on the right side of that fine line between normal personality and extreme blandness. His efforts to assist and comprehend Sakurako, to act as her Watson of sorts, albeit a Watson who's sexually attracted to a Sherlock for perfectly understandable reasons, form the best persistent through line of the series, and he's rather decent at it. He even becomes the subject of one of the stories and gets some additional character development from it. The series actually even did me a solid in shedding light on my biggest question. How the hell did Shotaro and Sakurako meet and then end up working together? They did not have to delve into that, many other series wouldn't have at this point, and I was satisfied with how they handled it. That quite impressed me, being such a nice capper to the entertaining relationship dynamic the two of them shared throughout all the episodes. On the whole, Beautiful Bones is a warmly human series, and not that I really need to explain it that much, hooray for video footage, but it looks damn good too. The scenery especially, it gets across the rural atmosphere and provides that sense of place that might go into making the setting a character in and of itself. Major props to the studio Troika, especially considering that they've only had one other show prior to this, which was a collaboration with someone else at that, namely A1 Pictures. So. Yeah, as a side note confession, being half of the studio team behind Ald Noah's Yura was another big reason, in addition to a Kotaku spotlight, for why I took the series up. Consider my curiosity well rewarded. I'm keeping a hopeful eye on what Troika does in the future. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. With humanity and scenery taken together, Beautiful Bones comes occasionally close to a small screen Makoto Shinkai vibe, but with more skeletons. I dig it. It complements the procedural side of the series even better than in theory, and it's at its best the more it dwells within that particular zone. It's a case where I wouldn't even care if there wasn't an overarching plot to the entire thing. Just provide some interesting stories, get Sakurako and Shotaro and company involved in them, 
watch it all play out, and I'm game for whatever they do. But that right there approaches the big problem Beautiful Bones has. They eventually try for more at the end of the series run, and don't do it so well. Maybe you recall from earlier in my review about Shotaro's relationship to Sakuraku being the series' best persistent throughline. You see, the fact that I called it the best was a very intentional choice of words on my part because there is another persistent throughline which is significantly weaker. Not that I was really looking for you to be impressed at how clever or mind-blowing it was to bring everything all together with such a stupid little detail though, but hey, at least I introduced it gracefully in a way that makes sense. Which is more than I can say for that particular throughline, which is Beautiful Bones' attempt at an overarching plotline. An overarching mystery, complete with an overarching mastermind who just so happens to be the hidden force behind many of the previous stories, who even has some prior connection to Sakurako. Oh yeah, this is supposed to be gripping stuff, but first off, let's not pretend we've never heard of that ever before. And second, none of it makes any goddamn sense when juxtaposed with the meditative rhythm of all the mysteries and character moments that we've been seeing. It does not help that whatever little is shown of the villain mastermind is weak as a character and not interesting. He is certainly not as creepy and disturbing as intended. It also does not help that the one mystery most directly related to this overarching arc is easily the weakest story of the bunch. It helps even less that the series has a comeback for more slash read the light novels ending where this damn arc is what we apparently get to look forward to next. And most insulting, it's actually made rewatching parts of Beautiful Bones, e.g. for review purposes perhaps, slightly annoying since I notice the cryptic foreshadowing way more now. And the worst thing is that the overarching arc actually makes some of these stories retroactively worse. Ultimately though, that does not derail the show as a whole. The efforts, the stories involving Sakurako, Shotoro, and everyone else they meet are too strong and heartening to let that happen. And that brings us to the conclusion. As a small town procedural, as slice of life with a compelling eccentric in the middle, as Shinkai Light, Beautiful Bones Sakurako's investigation is admirable, especially where Sakurako herself is concerned. I still want to see more stories with her, and that is one success that a crappy sustained mystery thriller arc could never eclipse, even if it does lessen the shine a little bit. Thank you for watching. If there's anything you'd want to chime in with, am I right or wrong, agree or disagree or something in the middle, any other comments otherwise? find me in the comments section, and until next time, this has been Red Stripe Reviews with your host, Justin. Don't you want to swim with me? Don't you want to feel my skin on your skin? It's only natural. Don't you want to... Hello.